we did on Tuesday, the balance and equations, more than one way to do it. You've got the chart method. So we're trying to balance this equation. This is the photosynthesis equation. You're making oxygen. All right, Sam said that we do make sugar. That is correct. So it's one of the products, sugar. Oh, you said that? Colin said that? Colin? Okay, sorry. Uh, so can anybody come up here and balance this for us? Chris? All right, come on. This is correct. Nice job, Chris. Excellent. 36. Uh, Heather? How many moles of CaVO2 are in 5.0 grams of CaVO2? And I said B2.5 times 10. And 37. Heather? That's Hannah. Oh, Hannah. What is the correct name for the hydrogen whose composition is strong? And I said. And 38. 38 is B. 39. Right, let's go with uh, Garrett. How many atoms are in 0 0.075 mole of titanium? And I put 39. Uh, I put A. 40. Adam. How many grams of phosphorus are in 500 grams of calcium phosphorus? And I said D, 99.84 grams. And 41, Clayton. What is the molar mass of CaOH2? And I said D, 74.92 grams. And 42, uh, Elijah. Which substance is that the same as uh, let's go with Heather. The name of a hydrate is calcium chloride dehydrate. What is its formula? And I put DCACL2 2 for H2. And 44. Anybody want to read? All right, Adam, go ahead. All right, flying scientific method. Combustion is the reaction of an element. If you're using it, there's a fire. Eventually, one of these two things is going to run out either sulfuric acid or the sodium carbonate solution. Now, I, there was a fire in our home a couple of years ago. I was putting some a solvent down to um, pull up. Uh, it was on. So we had a fire in our home a couple of years ago. The water heater was on, and the, um, the solvent it said on the instructions, obviously, to turn the water heater off. I just didn't read the instructions, so be aware of that. Uh, fires do happen. Accidents do happen. But fortunately, we had a fire extinguisher, and that helped uh, put out the fire. Yeah, it was foam like this. So you always want to have a fire extinguisher at your house. That's because some fires, water just won't do anything for them. And that was a type of fire that water didn't do anything for. Um, so in the future, wherever you're living, whether you're living in an apartment or house, make sure you have a fire extinguisher. All right. And if you look... One of these two things is going to run out first. Now, they try to make it to where they run out at the same time because they don't want to waste. They don't want to give you too much acid. They don't want to give you too much um, sodium carbonate solution. But it doesn't always work this way. Oftentimes in life, we will actually end up giving you too much of one thing. And I'm going to show you right now where that's, that's a possibility. For science or a project on how much fluoride is absorbed in the mouth from uh, drinking water. Uh, this she did a little research and she found that this project had never been done before, so she just decided to do it. Now the question is, um, when you're drinking fluoride, you don't want to get too much because then you have excess. You just want there to be kind of the same amount like the fire extinguisher, right? Because if there's excess fluoride, it becomes a problem. It forms this, it forms this fluoroapatite. And this is what is the enamel on your teeth. Uh, the problem with it, it's kind of like using a halogen light bulb which my daughter talks about, that cavity that's forming right here and your enamel is placed here, that, there's a problem with that. That's why things, the treatment's always left to best to a dentist or a dental hygienist where they can put a sealant on, right? Um, but the big plants make sugar and oxygen. 
and also that's how they breathe. No, that's not how they breathe. That's how they eat. Well, this is how they make sugar and oxygen. How they breathe is at nighttime, they do respiration. Plants will take in oxygen at night to survive. Nate, write this down. Jamal, plants at nighttime consume oxygen. In the daytime with the light is when they produce oxygen. So plants, just be aware, at nighttime, now they're not consuming a lot. They're kind of on that low breathing, sleeping mode, but they still are consuming some. The first thing we got to do is balance these carbons. So you can see I got six carbons now. Right, see that? So 6 times 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18. 18 minus 6 is 12. There's a 6 right there. So we have 12 over here that we need. So you need to have 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's how we get the 6 on this balanced equation. So I'm going to put it in a different color here just so you can see. There's six of them. Six of them right there. Six. This is one, six, and six. So, photosynthesis. To continue, there must be a material that combusts fuel, oxygen, and heat energy. Combustion can be controlled or stopped by one of them. Describe how firefighting techniques use the concept of limiting reactants to extinguish fires. So what's going to be the limiting reactant with the firefighter that they're trying to extinguish? Fuel. The oxygen. They just said that in what we read. So oxygen is what the firefighters are trying to prevent um, from the fire continuing, right? They're trying to prevent the fire from getting more oxygen. It just keeps it burning. Yeah, it keeps it burning. Um, <laughs> Now, in your life, you have to understand that you're going to constantly come into contact with excess and limiting. It's a constant battle. And when your health, most of your health conditions are associated that if you get too much of one thing, it tends to be bad for you. Like, um, if you consume too much alcohol, it can kill you. If you consume too much water, it can kill you. There have been people... Drowning. Yeah, they, they drink too much water. You can actually, if you drink too much water, it can kill you. Yeah, so be aware that that would be excess. If you drink excess water, it can kill you. Thinking two, but it's not two. Because when you have to do, when does have to equal six at the end? Uh, yes. So, what do you do? Would it be six? Yes. It'll be one? Yes. Would be one, two, nope. two, nope. Oh, six. Yes. You see why it's six? Because of the no. yeah, Oh, that one, that one. Well, six times two is what? Six times two equals six, twelve. Plus six. 
18. You have 6 here, right? So you got a minus 6. What's 18 minus 6? 12. What's 6 times 2? 12. Number 2. Kayla. The table shows the mold ratios of potassium and bromide combined to form potassium bromide according to the chemical reaction 2K plus 0. Number four, Kayla. Which is the percent composition of bromide and the compound in A, B, R, and I get D? Number five, uh, let's go with K. How many hydrogen atoms are in five molecules of isopropyl alcohol? And I got A. Six, Vance. And seven, <laughs> Austin. How many grams of potassium per per manganese? Per manganese, moles. I put eight. Eight is C. Nine. Dan. Number 10, uh, Gabrielle. What is the correct mole ratio of A3PO4 to A3 in the chemical reaction D? Number 11. B uh, here. 11, let's go with K. What is the formula for a compound that contains 64.75 grams of nitrogen and 185.25 grams of oxygen? And I got B. And number 12, let's go with Carlos. And 13, uh, Gabriel. And 14, TT. 14. A. 14 is D. Oh, sorry, Carlos. And 15. All right, 15 K. The empirical formula for a compound is CH2O, and the molar mass is 180.2 G mole. What is the molecular formula for this compound? And I put D. And 16. Okay, Michaela. Well, we'll be the average mass of six samples, A. And 17. Uh, Michaela? Which is the percent composition of phosphorus in phosphorus and A? 18. 18. 18 is B. 19. Uh, Kaya? Fighting techniques use the concept of limiting reactants to extinguish fires. So, what are they seeing as the limiting reactant in the fire? Anybody know? Raise your hand. We just read it. Austin, what are firefighters trying to uh, use as the limiting reactant in the fire? Oxygen. They're trying to deprive. Right. The oxygen is what's fueling the fire. So firefighters are trying to make it a limiting reactant. Now, in your future, wherever you're working, as a manager, your goal is to try to recognize what's limiting. Now, my daughter, she's getting ready to go to uh, state for the science fair, and she did a project. Her project is on um, how much fluoride is absorbed in the mouth from drinking water. 
Now we've learned in here that fluoride is very dangerous. It has the highest electronegativity value. So you want to be very careful. It's more dangerous than chlorine. If you pour chlorine on your clothes, what's going to happen? It's going to bleach them. That's how dangerous chlorine is. I mean, if you drink enough chlorine, it's going to kill you. It's very dangerous. So fluorine is even more dangerous. You can be very careful with it. And then for uh, the, the metals, francium obviously is the most dangerous there. So the fluorine is very dangerous. So the question is, how much is uh, absorbed in your mouth from drinking water? Now, dentists want fluoride in drinking water. Why? Anybody know? Yeah, it's supposed to help tooth decay in who? In only children. Adults, it is shown to be not beneficial at all. So the question is, why is it beneficial for children and it's not beneficial for adults? So my daughter, she answered this question based on limiting reactants. Most children don't pay attention to what they eat, so they eat a lot of sugary snacks. Hello, Harrison, they eat sugary snacks. And those acids wear down your enamel and they cause this hydroxy appetite to, to go away from your tooth. Is everybody clear? When you eat sugary foods, this is what's coming off. And then the idea is if you add fluorine, the fluorine floating around will form this fluoroappetite. This fluoroappetite. And this is what's going to help prevent the cavities. Well, the problem is this is kind of like the halogen cycle that it's not going to form maybe where you want it. Maybe you have a cavity forming right here, but the fluoroappetite forms right here. So it's not truly effective. It's better to go to the dentist and have them apply it where it needs to be applied, either a sealant or something that's going to be a little more effective. Uh, but the issue here is why does the process work for children and it doesn't work for adults? So what do you think is limiting for adults in the mouth? Anybody know? What here is limiting? What's well, the phosphate? The phosphate is limiting in adults. As you get older, you don't grow as much. And in the growing cycle, you produce more phosphate. Uh, ATP is a, a product of energy. If you, you'll notice this when you get older. You're still young right now, but when you get older, you have less childhood energy. Like yesterday, my kids were running around outside building snowmen and you know building like igloos, where I was kind of like, not doing that, I was less active. <laughs> Aluminum, and it ends up causing dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Now this is typically what you see in older people. So right now the concern here, our population is aging, and this, there's a big cost associated with this. If you have... All right, so if you have the fluoride reacting with the aluminum and it produces Alzheimer's disease, disease and you have a third of the population, um, and you have a large number of people with Alzheimer's, that's a problem. You can't treat people with Alzheimer's disease normally. Does anybody know the effects of Alzheimer's? Yeah, forget, they'll start roaming around the neighborhood. They don't know, they'll just walk in front of cars. Uber, that self-driving car, ran over somebody last week. Did you hear about that? Killed somebody? Yes, that's very expensive though. If you have to place somebody in a home, we would rather not do that. So that's the seriousness of fluorine. It is very, very, very dangerous as far as like over-consuming it. There's something called fluorosis where you have these conditions where your teeth can become brown. It can also affect your bones. But the biggest one up here that we're concerned about for older people would be the Alzheimer's. You cannot change the subscripts. All you can do is add more of these and add more of these. So if you remember, okay, 06. Can't be 06. Must be 0.
27. Let's go with Josh. Which is true of the reaction shown below? It is B. And 28, uh, Cameron. If the dust components on Earth just have a mass of 724 grams, what is what will be the mass of 15 grams? I put uh, uh, E. And 29, Francesca. Our question number one says, describe how a firefighting techniques use the concept of limiting reactants to extinguish the fires. They're trying to prevent the oxygen from getting to the fire. So that's why they use these fire extinguishers, the kind of foam, they prevent the oxygen from getting in there. It kind of smothers the fire, makes sense? Now, the fire extinguisher you see right here, both of the ingredients, that would be the acid, the sulfuric acid, everybody see that? and the sodium carbonate solution. Those, both of those ingredients are just the right amount to where there's no excess and no limiting. What type of reaction is that called? It's called a complete reaction. That means the reaction goes to completion. There's nothing there to limit it. There's no excess. It's called a complete reaction. And, and that's what you kind of want to do as a fire, you know, as a, uh, I guess you would say, that's a fire extinguisher. You want to have one that runs out completely, you don't want to have the excess, that would be waste, right? You want to put the fire out. Jimmy? I didn't get a picture for you. Alright, so here's, here's one right here. Now, I want to give you an example of a situation where you have limiting and excess in the real world, and that would be, get some drinking water, you can absorb some fluoride in the mouth. This study hadn't been done before, so she decided to do it. You, you absorb about 0.1 part per million in your mouth, so if you, if you drink, eight part per million in the glass and you absorb one part per million, how much is going into your body? Seven part per million. About 0.7 part per million. Now, they don't add the fluoride in the drinking water so that you'll absorb it in your mouth. They actually want it to be absorbed in your body so it goes back in the saliva. The saliva is where it's constantly kind of doing its thing, but you only take about 0.01 part per million and above. It's like 0.01 to like 0.06. It's a very low amount. Goes back in your saliva, right? Now, fluoride is very dangerous. It's more dangerous than bleach. You take bleach, you pour it all over your clothes. It's super dangerous. It is the most dangerous element on the periodic table next to francium. Francium is a metal. You drop it in water, watch out. I mean, you drop potassium water, it explodes. And the activity just goes, increases as you go down. So francium is considered the most dangerous metal. Uh, it was the last naturally occurring metal to be found on the earth, francium. All right, so dissolving the enamel is you're dissolving this hydroxy apatite. And when this goes away, then a cavity can form. So they add the fluorine, and you form this fluoroapatite. The problem is it's kind of like... This is wrong. 
That's wrong. You can't change the subscripts. It's H2O. That's right. Think about six times two is plus six minus six. No, that would be 24. No. What times two is going to give you 12? What times one? What times two will give you 12? Six. That's what I wrote the first time. There you go. substances have the same empirical formula. The answer to 42 is C. 43. 43 is D. 44. Josh. 44 says how many moles of silver atoms are in 1.8 times 10 to the 20 atoms of silver. The answer to 44 is A. 45. Oxygen from being exposed to You're 65% oxygen, so you're going to burn. At least your skin will. Yeah. Um, if you look on here, we have an equal amount of the acid, an equal amount of sodium bicarbonate, or sodium carbonate solution. You have a complete reaction, which means no excess or no limiting. No waste. The big important there is there's no waste. So when you're at a business down the road, the goal is to prevent waste. Because if you prevent waste, what do you have then more of? Money. You have more money if you have less waste, right? 0.8 part per million of chlor fluorine in your drinking water, and your mouth absorbs 0.1. How much is going into your stomach? 0.7. Right. 0.7. Right. 0.8 minus one is 0.7. Does everybody see that? Yeah. If, if your mouth absorbs 0.1, you drink 0.8. 0.7 is going in your stomach. Well, studies have shown that your body in your bone is going to absorb 50% of that, which would be 0.35. So it's going to go into your bone, it's going to cling to it. Now in your mouth, it does this. This is the cycle in your mouth. And the reason why we're talking about this, we're talking about limiting reactants in this chapter. So you go, you eat some light cookies, and the acids in your mouth take off your dental. This is the hydroxyapatite. And that's when your enamel is being removed. All right, and this can be create an area where a cavity can go. All right. Now, when you take the fluoride water, you're going to form this fluoroapatite, and that's supposed to repair the enamel. The problem is it's kind of like a halogen bulb. It's just going to go anywhere. You're better off going to the dentist and having them put on a, a uh, sealant. You've heard of a sealant? 
I've got a couple sealants in my mouth. Now, when you're young, what do you make a lot of? Phosphate. So you have a lot of phosphate in your body when you're young. That's why you're running around all crazy being nuts. Yeah. Well, when you're older, you don't have as much energy. Like yesterday, my kids were out throwing snowballs, building igloos, and I'm inside chilling. Yeah, they build an igloo. Yeah. My daughter made a snow girl, still a woman. 